Welcome to this session. In this session, we would like to talk about AGL production readiness profile. That is new AGL IBI activity focusing on the product adaption. This presentation consists of the following six parts. I'll start with the background and then talk about the issue when adapting AGL to actual products. And I'll talk about production readiness profile. That is the activity for the purpose of filling the gap between uh, current AGL and IBL product in the market. Then I'll introduce some automotive requirements and functions those are included in production readiness. I'll also introduce the roadmap of this activity next. And finally, I'll wrap up my presentation with call to action. Uh, by the way, co-present Nishiguchi-san is, looks like, Nishiguchi-san, can you listening my presentation? Someone can hear my voice, but if we can cannot, what I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, uh, please let me continue. Uh, this session is co hosted by Toyota and Denso, and I'll hand it over to Nishigishi san from Denso during the section four. So, Nishigishi san. I'll continue my presentation and please prepare your setting by the time I hand it to you. Yeah, sorry. So, before starting the content, uh, please let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Mitsuo Tate. I'm a software engineer in Toyota. My background is not always automotive, rather, I have more experiences in the data center side, such as data storage and cloud orchestration. But currently, I'm in charge of developing IBS system and AGL in Toyota. Oh, looks like this is signs all of me. Yeah, bro. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Oh. But uh, this is a live session, as you can see. Okay. As a background of production readiness profile, uh, I'd like to I'd like to introduce uh, how Toyota have been working with AGL and uh, current state of AGL from OEM point of view to improve the presence of AGL. Toyota have been developing POCs and demonstrating applications such as window manager and home screen. And we have presented them in areas and the CES last year, for example. Uh, 
thanks to the contribution from many companies and community members, AGL membership has been grown to more than 140 companies now. That is great, however. We, when we look at the status of product adoption by OEMs, only a few cases are publicly announced. As far as we know, there are three announcements from OEMs. One of them is the announcement in 2017. So we think AGL membership is growing, but product adoption is still low. From Toyota point of view, OEM cannot use AGL for their product easily. The main reason is because current AGL doesn't meet OEM's required product requirements, such as automotive specific requirements or quality of scores and so on. On the other hand, AGL cannot meet such product requirements because they are not well defined nor contributed by OEMs. So to break this situation, we think the contribution of product requirements from OEM side or tier one side is necessary. How started uh, disclosing our source code, product source code, and started the activity to discuss what the product requirement is for IBI. This activity is called production readiness, and the source code is disclosed to production readiness profile. So what is production readiness profile? It's a, it's a part of IBI project inside many AGA projects. And it's a new platform uh, where product level IBI requirements and the implementation are disclosed. We think this profile can be used as product level reference. After the discussion within the community, selected source code and requirement from production readiness will be merged into mainline AGL. That is called IBI profile. Then from this slide, I'd like to introduce some example of requirements and functions in the production readiness profile. Currently, upstream the profile only includes modules in platform layers, such as health monitoring, life cycle management, post data management, and policy management, and so on. Uh, however, automotive requirements or product level use cases are important to understand why these function modules are needed. So in this section, I want to introduce function modules that is included in production readiness profile and the related product requirements or use cases. First topic is health monitoring. Typical product requirements related to this module is uh, when the navigation system stops abnormally, the system shall restore the original running state. For example, think about the situation when error occurred while driving and using the navigation. The system platform should arise and restore it to the normal state. During this recovery, system should display, display a consistent view to the driver and should not require a reset operation by the driver. So the system platform should detect service abnormality and recover to an operating state with a user interface. And also platform should detect memory leak and restore to the normal state. Also should uh, loading these anomalies. So <laughs> health monitoring is a function module to meet these requirements.
second topic is life cycle management. In this case, related to this module is managing application starting order. Uh, <laughs> requirements is, for example, the service which are, was active when system shut down, charge startup areas and other services at the next system starts. For example, if the if radio was running when the driver get out of the car yesterday, uh, <clears throat> the driver can start listening to radio again quickly today when getting in the car. To meet this requirement, platform system platform should uh, 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 system start other resident services according to the order set in the configuration file. So life cycle management modules control the, this order of starting other service and application. And this order has to be changeable in the runtime. Another example related to life cycle management is logging. Every shutdown logs and error logs shall be saved properly. So for example, when multiple services, service A, B, C are running and shutting down, every shutdown logs must be saved properly. To meet this requirement, logout service should be the last service to shut down. So from platform, system platform point of view, uh, life cycle management mo module has to control the shutdown order to shut down logger service rest. Third topic is power management module. Uh, one typical use case is quick startup. Product requirements usually define startup, uh, startup time target. Uh, IWA operation can be started within X second, for example. So systems shall allow users to operate uh, quickly when getting in the car. Without any support from power management modules, the system cannot start the boot process before acron state. It sounds normal. But if the target is, is less than 10 seconds, for example, it's difficult to meet uh, this requirement in this manner. So if the power management supports standby state and can receive the dual open signal, the system can start the booting process before acron state. And the, the user can start the operation far more quickly. So the power management module should be able to keep standby state and should be able to start services on hand signal, that is door open signal in this example. Another use case related to Power management is the alerting when system shall alert, alert when the sensor detects a dangerous situation, uh, even when the driver, or even when the system is in a calm state, alerting function should be activated from other issues. So, power management module support this functionality in some implementation. Similar to the previous example, remote parking is also a related use case of power management module in some implementation. To be controllable from outside a car, the power management module keeps the communication services even in ACOC state again, and communicate with, enable communication with other issues. Well, 
first topic is rule based arbitrator. This part will be presented by Nishibu san from there. So I'd like to hand it over to Nishibu san Okay. Just a So that's a can stop that share out. So can you see my slide? Okay. Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. So today I'd like to explain about the uh, rule based arbitrator and uh, rule based arbitration. Uh, and the uh, agenda is here. So the, uh, at first I would like to uh, explain the, what is the rule based arbitration. And the next, uh, so we will explain the uh, background of the rule based arbitrator and arbitration. Then, uh, third one, and the third, so what can be defined as a root? And the last, uh, we will explain the rule based upgrade software. Okay. Okay, then first, so uh, what can be the uh, what is the rule based arbitration? So, when the several information for driver uh, or content needs to be notified simultaneously, so rule based arbitrator uh, called RBA uh, decides which content is prioritized. So, in case of the uh, IBI or uh, cockpit system, uh, such a feature is uh, important to uh, facilitate the driver to detect the important information. Here is a uh, sorry. Yeah, this picture is an example. So left side. And uh, the, in the left side, the uh, so navigation guidance and the phone call, the uh, some uh, wa warning information uh, event occurred at the same timing. So we need to uh, decide which which one should be notified to the uh, uh, driver. Uh, therefore, the uh, uh, therefore RBA uh, will decide this. Uh, Prioritize uh, this uh, based on the uh, root uh, described at the uh, uh, product specification. And the next is about the background of the uh, rule based arbitrator. So, in the legacy, uh, following the problem was right there. Uh, therefore, we want to develop or establish the uh, HMM manager for the these purpose. However, so the display arbitration uh, will be more complex, so because of uh, uh, there are many scene uh, or content. And uh, such a scene or content are increased. For example, the autonomous driving case. And also, uh, flexible arbitration logic is needed as based uh, as a base technology for realizing consolidation cockpit and uh, HMI manager concept. So, in order to solve the uh, above. Uh, uh, these issues and uh, to realize uh, this HMA manager case. So then so developed a uh, little based arbitrator called RBA and uh, using 
uh, this software in the real product. So uh, we uh, decide to upstream this to Asia. And the next uh, is about the rule-based arbitration rules. So uh, uh, we can uh, specify the basic rules and the uh, exceptional rules at the uh, uh, rule-based RBA rules. So for example, so as a basic rules, we can specify the area or policy based on the priority and also some contents. And uh, about uh, regarding to the uh, exceptional rules, so we uh, specify the constraint formula uh, like uh, and or or implication or something like that. And in the details, so we are making some document to for the contribution. And the last is about the RBA software, especially the how to uh, integrate the RBA into AGL. So, as of currently, so AGL has a uh, AGL composite to composite the uh, graphics and uh, manage uh, to manage the uh, surfaces from the application. Uh, therefore, uh, we are considering how to integrate or how to combine the RBA and the AGL Composer. So in order to minimize the uh, uh, impact of the application, so we want to adapt this uh, approach shown to this picture. So the first application, we do request uh, something to the AGL Composer. Then RBA put such a request and uh, execute the arbitration uh, based on the rules uh, specified by the uh, specification from OEA. And uh, so such a hook mechanism or a uh, uh, hook mechanism uh, for the hook mechanism, mechanism well, we are considering the, uh, how to uh, hook or how to uh, return the result of the arbitration. So using the uh, policy default in the AGL Composter. And now uh, we are working uh, this, uh, uh, we are working according to this approach and uh, as a current plan, so we will, or we can uh, start the code review from the beginning of the uh, next January. So that's all about the RBA from my end. So uh, I, I would like to hand over uh, uh, to Dr. San again. Thank you. Thank you, Rishibis-san. Please let me share my screen again. So, another topic for production readiness is uh, quality requirement. Contributed source codes are fully tested for actual products. For example, these codes achieve 100% of CZLC1 coverage and pass the integration test and system test. Those tests are not usual in OSS 
because each OSS project is independent. And also, contributed source codes conform to industry standard development rules, such as MISRA and SART. The, the maintenance of the, the first commit is under discussion. But also, we plan to comply with AGL's test framework for the continuous test. And we also <clears throat> want to follow AGL's release cycle and update source codes if needed, provide security patch and so on. But it's under planning. <clears throat> Although our approach of production readiness is cold part, but it doesn't mean documents are not important. We think specification document is very, very important, especially for OEMs. But the first version of AGL requirement specification was released in 2015 and not updated. And there are gaps between this spec and current source code. Then we'd like to keep on contributing the spec specification document through the, this production readiness activity. But uh, in the short term, the specification for production readiness is also uh, under development. Current version is 0.10 draft version, and it's maintained in AGL conference page. We will keep the consistency between the source code and the specification as far as possible. Then I'd like to talk about the current state and the roadmap of the production readiness profile. And this block diagram is the architecture diagram from AGL specification. The function module we have contributed, uh, we have introduced, are uh, mapped into red circle module in this diagram. As you can see, uh, they are mainly in the platform services layer. And REA is categorized as uh, part of AGL application. They are the current module in production readiness profile now. And this slide shows our current plan of contribution to production readiness. We are in the trial operation phase now, and we have disclosed the modules mainly in the platform areas and RBA from Tensosan. For the next year, we plan to disclose application manager, window manager, and so on. After that, we also plan to disclose other services and HMR framework related module, but it's not determined yet. This is our current roadmap. But if someone could contribute more, more module could be available or implemented earlier. So as the final topic of this presentation, I'd like to ask you for your contribution. Production readiness is not Toyota specific activity. Toyota is just kicking off for now. Everyone who wants to fill the gap between current AGL and IDF product is welcome. Please contribute to your product source code or product requirements. And we plan to have a bi weekly regular meeting named IBIEG. Please bring your requirements or discussion topic to IBIEG. The first meeting will be held next week. And uh, any other review comments and the discussion are always welcome anytime. We have conference pages for production readiness and RBA on the AGL pages. So please freely drop your comments there. Thank you for joining our presentation. We'd like to answer questions from Q&A if any.
Sebastian. Uh, thank you for question about storage life management. Uh, I think there is no implementation specific to the storage life management, but some related module are disclosed. In this slide, uh, persistent storage related module are included and Health monitoring modules check devices failure. But the detail will be disclosed in documental source code, so please check that. By the way, other Toyota member is joining in this chat, so other members might answer to this question if I'm wrong. Thank you for your question, Jan Simon. Uh, the timeline is uh, presented, uh, is shown in this slide, I think. Uh, <coughs> we plan to commit, as you know, we are disclosing fast commit and uh, during trial operation, we will commit some uh, health monitoring, farm management, RBA, and in the next phase, we will continue to contribute more other services, including application manager, window manager, and so on. This is uh, the rough timeline of our contribution. And demo image, as for the demo image, well, we have currently we don't have not decided yet. We don't plan to we don't plan to focus on some demonstration image or complete set of full system IDI. But uh, we are trying to enable some demonstrate. I think. <coughs> That is working some application on this production readiness profile. But again, it, the demonstration is just 
mainly for mainly for the for testing these platform layers modules for now. Uh, thank you for your question. As for smart policy, uh, uh, I'm not sure. I think there's no plan about the, the policy contribution, smart policy contribution. And we'd like to discuss uh, what kind of security policy is the best for IBI at the, the IBI EG. So, I think it's a currently uh, discussion topic. Yes, as Hoshin said, is following a total product is currently using SVRI apps. I think it's no. Is that correct, Hoshin <laughs> said?
please wait for some answer. We are discussing a little bit. Yes, it's true. Uh, thank you, Yansima. There are some, there are some right working group for IC and actually in to, inside Twitter, we have, we are IBI team and IC team made different.
time to process this issue. Now, Mr. Karai, I just called this session. Maybe we can stop the broadcast. Yeah, okay. Thank yeah. you for joining. Hope you are in the conference. Thank you, everyone. Bye. And uh, see you in next virtual workshop, Asia. Bye-bye.